Welcome to video lecture number one for a new chapter. It's a chapter on blood. In this video lecture, we are going to begin to cover disorders of the red blood cells. And before we get into the actual slides, I just want to let you know that all terms and abbreviations that are on your word list for this chapter will um, be read on the slides. Okay, now the titles on all the slides are also read, so don't just ignore the titles, but any word within the actual slide that is read will be on your word list, um, mostly just so I don't have to keep reminding you. So before we get into any actual disorders, we are going to talk about some of the basics. Um, to begin with, you should know that your blood is made up of four different parts. You have plasma, which is the liquid part of your blood, erythrocytes, which is a scientific term for red blood cells. You have leukocytes, which is a scientific term for white blood cells. You have, um, the fourth one is thrombocytes, which is the term for platelets. Now, if we jump back up to erythrocytes, the root erythro means red, and the suffix site means cell. So that's where you can connect it to red blood cells, because that's literally what the word breaks down to. And we can abbreviate red blood cells as RBC. If we look at the term leukocyte, the root leuco means white. So that's your connection to white blood cells, because that's literally what the word breaks down to. And we can abbreviate white blood cells as WBC. And finally, if we look at the term thrombocyte, the root thrombo means clot. And if you didn't already know, the function of platelets in our blood is to form clots so that we don't bleed out. So thrombo means clot, site means cell. So platelets are the cells that form clots. Okay, and one last term to be aware of is corpuscle, which is just a general medical term that means a blood cell. There are two more terms that we need to know, and just by looking at them, you might see that they are very similar. They both contain the root erythro, which again means red. So automatically, you can guess that these have something to do with red blood cells. Um, the major difference between the two terms are the suffixes. So the suffix poetin, um, which you see in the top word, means the maker which when we put it together with the root, we get the maker of red blood cells. And that's what erythropoietin is. It's a hormone that stimulates the production of red blood cells in the body. And then looking at that second term, the suffix poesis means to make. So when we put that with the root, it means to make red blood cells, which is exactly the definition. So erythropoietin is the hormone that stimulates the production of red blood cells, and erythropoiesis is the actual formation of red blood cells. Now we can get into some disorders of red blood cells, and we're going to look at anemia, which might be a term that's familiar to a lot of you. It means a deficiency of red blood cells or a deficiency of hemoglobin. Now, hemoglobin is the protein that's located inside your red blood cells that actually makes your red blood cells appear red in color. It also is the molecule in your red blood cells that helps transport oxygen throughout the body. And we can abbreviate hemoglobin as capital H, lowercase b. That's not a typo. Now, since the hemoglobin is what makes your red blood cells appear red, if you are deficient in hemoglobin, your blood is going to appear pale in color. Likewise, if you are deficient in red blood cells altogether, your blood is also going to appear pale in color. Now, the term for this paleness in color is hypochromia. The prefix hypo means deficient or below. And in addition to hypochromia, you will also experience hypoxia, which means deficient in oxygen, because you are deficient in the mechanisms your body uses to transport oxygen throughout the body, which would cause your body then to be 
overall deficient in oxygen. And usually one of the main symptoms of anemia that causes people to go into the doctor and get checked out and diagnosed um, is extreme fatigue. I used to experience this back in high school before I got diagnosed with anemia. Um, I swear that I could have slept the entire day. Like I would take three or four hour naps and I could have slept the whole day. Even just the smallest physical activity would just wipe me out completely. And that's obviously then due to that hypoxia. So when you go to the doctor, right, and you get a blood test, whether it's to test for anemia or just a routine blood test, the doctor is going to look at a couple of things. The first thing is called the hematocrit, which is abbreviated capital H, lowercase c, t. That's not a typo. Um, this is the percentage of red blood cells in your blood. So if you look at the picture on the slide, a normal sample of blood, which is um, the one farthest to the left, is going to contain about 45% red blood cells. If the blood sample that you give contains much less than that, which you can see in that second test tube, they can diagnose you with anemia. And if your percentage of red blood cells is much higher, like in the third test tube, they can diagnose you with something called polycythemia, which we'll get to later. The other thing they're going to look at to help diagnose you with other disorders is your complete blood count or your CB CBC. There we go. This is going to show the doctor exactly how much of each blood component is apparent in your blood. Um, so there's a bunch of different types of white blood cells. It literally breaks down the count of each of those types of white blood cells for your doctor. Um, and then a level above or below a normal level of a specific part of your blood is going to allow your doctor to diagnose you with a very specific disorder. There are different types of anemia. Um, the most common one, and it usually appears in females, is iron deficiency anemia. Um, iron is really important in the makeup of hemoglobin. It actually is what makes hemoglobin red in color. So not having enough Iron can limit the amount of hemoglobin that your body is able to make. And obviously this is caused by eating a low iron diet. Um, <clears throat> it's usually coupled with heavy menstrual bleeding as well, because obviously losing a lot of blood every month could cause a deficiency in red blood cells. Um, I was diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia in high school, and I just simply increased the amount of iron-rich foods that I ate, and I started taking an iron supplement, and it completely removed the symptoms for me. Um, but one thing that I learned, treat this as a fun fact, um, it's through research and not personal experience, but iron supplements um, can cause constipation, like really bad constipation, um, but I have always taken a slow-release iron supplement, which obviously slowly releases iron throughout the day, and that does not cause constipation. So fun fact. The second type of anemia is um, pernicious anemia, which is also known as PA, and the term pernicious was given to this form of anemia because it was thought back in the day as deadly, um, but that was basically just because there wasn't treatment available. Um, it's not deadly anymore, but it used to be. And it's due to a lack of vitamin B12. So B12 is needed to make hemoglobin just like iron is. Um, so again, without vitamin B12, your body can't make as much hemoglobin. Um, now what happens is the number of red blood cells that your body makes is decreased along with the concentration of hemoglobin within those red blood cells. So what happens is the red blood cells that are produced by your body, they are larger, so the size of the red blood cells increases, and we it forms what we call macrocytes. So macro means large, and site means cell, so macrocytes are large cells. 
And because your bone marrow is made, or your bone marrow makes your red blood cells, when the red blood cells are large in the form of macrocytes, they get stuck in your bone marrow. They can't leave to enter into the bloodstream, which then leads to that um, deficiency in red blood cells. The last type of anemia we are going to discuss in this video is sickle cell anemia, which is something you might be familiar with. Sickle cell anemia is a genetic disorder um, in which your red blood cells are sickle-shaped instead of donut-shaped, like you can see in that picture. Um, the sickle-shaped cells, um, it causes the red blood cells to stick together and form blockages in your capillaries, which then can lead to issues and death. Um, one of my favorite terms in this class, which means to stick together, is agglutinate. Um, if you listen to the word, like this is why I like it because it's so obvious what it means, agglutinate, right? When you glue something, you're trying to stick two things together. Agglutinate means to stick together. Um, so one fun fact before I end this video, uh, you have to be homozygous recessive in order to have full-blown sickle cell anemia that is lethal. Being homozygous dominant, which most of us are in the United States, gives us all normal donut-shaped red blood cells. But this genetic disorder follows co-dominance, so if you are heterozygous, your body is going to have half donut-shaped red blood cells and half sickle-shaped red blood cells, which isn't as deadly as full-blown, but it comes with a present. You get to be resistant to malaria, which is the disease, deadly disease carried by mosquitoes. So that's my fun fact, and that's going to be it for video lecture number one.